Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. I asked you to get your day of work. This is what I'm going to tell about a map, right? I mean, it's not in the middle of the road. You see all the... Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops, where we uncover the truth behind abuse of power. Today, we expose two cases where corrupt officers faced unexpected consequences after targeting innocent individuals. Subscribe, like, and share this video to amplify the voices of those affected and demand accountability from those sworn to protect and serve. If you like this video, press 1. The first story hails from Johnson Creek, Wisconsin. Lee Otto II, a military veteran and disabled vet with a service dog, served in Iraq from 2004 to 2005, specifically during OIF-2 in Fallujah with the Big Red One. Otto posted a video on Facebook following a confrontation with the Johnson Creek Police Department. He was at a Menard store with his service dog, not wearing a mask due to PTSD, traumatic brain injuries, anxiety, and other war-related wounds. The store's general manager called the state police, sheriff's department, and local police due to Otto's lack of mask. He was detained and paraded through the store in front of everyone, accused of resisting arrest. However, the video suggests otherwise. Officers humiliated Otto, placing him in front of the store for all to see, jerking him around so forcefully that their own body cameras fell off. As Otto mentioned on his Facebook page, the irony was that the officer who arrested him walked back into the store without a mask, despite Otto complying and leaving when asked. Although Otto was eventually released without charges, the store manager's and police officer's actions were beyond comprehension. Mandate? Okay. Have to wear a mask if you're going to be inside the store. Okay. Who's, whose mandate is that? No, it's Governor Evers. <laughs> but no one's enforcing it. It's... And this I can't, I can't wear one. Okay. I go anywhere and I don't, I can't wear one. How come medically. You can't wear one? No. That's medical. Medically. Okay, do you have a medical form or some type of proof? No, nope, my doctor can. Okay. Well, okay. I've also informed you that you could shop online. So that's our option. Well, I can't shop online. Okay. Okay, well, then you also can't shop inside the store. Okay. So if you're going to shop inside the store, you need a mask. Whose rule is that? That is our general office. And what's his name? How can I contact? It's a general office. You can contact them through Menards.com okay. or any other way that you can find online. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have to leave? You do. Yes. Okay, I will leave. Can I get your name though first real quick? For what? Just document who you are. Make sure you're not wanted by the FBI or you something know, like that. You can contact. I'm not answering any questions today. Uh, it's not going to work. You have to contact. I'm not I answering any questions so. today. It's either, okay. So you do one or two ways. A, you can identify yourself or B, you can disregard, and I'll call more officers over here. I'll arrest you, take it down to jail. For what? And fingerprint you, see who you are. For what? You have to identify who you are. My name's Lee. Nice to meet you. What's your middle name, Lee? William. Last name? Otto. O T T O. Correct. What's your date of birth, Lee? Uh, that's, I'm not answering any further questions. You I didn't do anything wrong. Well, you're not wearing a mask, which is part of the rules to be in the store. Okay, I'll leave. I have to identify who you are. I just didn't identify who I am. I need your date of birth, Lee. I'm done. You're not, you're not free to leave. You're not free to leave. You gotta identify who you are. I just identified who I am. 6547. You got a second. Uh, not 33, but step it up. So am I under arrest or am I free to go? You're not free to go right now. You're not also, also under, under arrest. I'm just okay. trying to figure out what your date of birth is. All right, thank you. No, you're not free to go, I said. I'm not. I'm walking around you're, the store. No, you got to stand right here and talk to me. Okay. Why is that? Because I have to identify who you are. But I'm in the store, right? Yes. I can't. I have to have a mask. So we need to go outside, correct? We can eventually go outside, but I need to identify. But I'm are. in the store and I cannot have a mask on, correct? Once we get outside, we give me your data. He just asked me to leave. So I'm leaving. Just hold on. Hold on. Don't, don't touch. Why are you touching me? Put your back. Put your back. 6547. I'm not resisting. You can pick up your phone now. I'm not resisting. Drop the phone. I'm not resisting. 
Yeah, please video this. Thank you. Can I have please? Can you grab my phone, please? I've got okay. it. Video this. So I was asked to leave the store because I'm not wearing a mask. Now you're you keeping are. me here in the store well, without no. a mask. Are you videoing this? Thank you. Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. I have to you get your data working this. But I'm in the store without a mask, right? There.
Okay. So if you're willing just to head on out. It's just like to find out who the supervisor is. Can you find the store? Yeah. Well, there's a general manager. Uh, maybe your wife can okay. get that, but you have to get the general manager. Okay. okay. Yeah. What are your thoughts on this case? Please comment below to share. I shared this body camera footage from Jacksonville, Florida, depicting a black military veteran being stopped by an officer and subjected to mistreatment. This raised questions about whether a police officer can initiate a traffic stop solely based on suspicion, prompting discussions on warrantless arrests, probable cause, and the potential involvement of racism. Put your hands out the window. Whatever I have my lights on. I rolled the windows down, put my job license, my registration mm -hmm. out the window. That's y'all supposed to ask when y'all first pushed my door over, right? Y'all ain't do none of that. Come on, I'm not posting for a law of all, citizen. Shut your mouth. Did you how many different signs did I turn on? Listen, I'm a black man. In I'm America. asking you a I question. I'm terrified of the police. Mr. Black Man, I'm asking you a question. Get in the car. Shut your mouth. Turn the car off. Turn it off. Turn it off. Hands out the window. Put your hands out the window. You might be wondering where you've heard this grating, irritating accent before. Well, you might have heard it here or elsewhere in the media. This is Jacksonville police officer Justin Peppers, and as I mentioned, he was investigated by Internal Affairs following the release of this body cam footage. I'm not sure if you're going to be thrilled with the outcome. All right, for some reason YouTube decided to age restrict this video even though it was already featured in a fully approved and monetized video I uploaded about eight months ago. It's just absurd. 
Let me quickly explain what occurs. The guy extends both of his arms out of the window and the cops grab hold of them. One officer specifically instructs him to keep quiet. Then they handcuff him and escort him to the back of their police car. I'm on it. What's up? Can you unlock it? Huh? Where's my dad? Don't worry right about there. it. You Look keep your freaking hands out the window and shut your mouth. I'll figure it out. Why are cops so surprised that there are large chunks of the civilian population who don't like them? I mean, just look at how they treat someone like Braxton Smith, a law-abiding Navy veteran. He gets pulled over and given the treatment you see in this body cam footage. Supposedly, he was pulled over for a tail light, which is nonsense. He wasn't cited for any traffic violation. He was stopped, pulled out of his car, and treated this way. So, we're left to wonder why the officer did what he did. Whatever the reason, this police officer's feelings were hurt. They were hurt because Mr. Smith chose to drive another 300 yards to a spot of his choosing for the traffic stop. Mr. Smith explained multiple times why he did that, but this officer refuses to accept it. They're gaslighting Mr. Smith, bullying him. The fact that this cop claims Mr. Smith didn't have the right to drive another 300 yards down the road to a safer location as a free American, someone not under arrest for a traffic violation, where he feels safe, is just shameful and wrong. What's the, what's, what's up with this? Let's eat. I got everything out of his pockets. All right, give me your shoe. Oh, someone bought a license. You know. Well, right now, you might be going to jail. For what? I'll talk to you about that in a second. Okay. What makes this spot safer for you than the, where I tried to stop you? I mean, y'all hit the lights on me. I didn't want to pull in the middle of the road. That's dangerous for y'all. I didn't want to pull in a well-lit area. You get y'all a lot of traffic. Okay. I ain't stupid. So do you think that making a safe spot for us is, is, uh, is something that you're authorized to do? I mean, I don't. I ain't think it require authorization. I'm trying to be safe just like y'all. I, I ain't posting uh -huh. a threat. I send y'all something. Wait, sir, so you trying to be safe? You're trying to find a safe spot for you or for me? For both of us. No, you don't get to do that. Okay, that's understandable. You can I'm make a claim you. that you're trying to make a safe spot for you. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All right. Why is this spot safer than that spot? It's, it's a well lit area. I mean, it's not in the middle of the road. Do you see all those? You see all those uh, street lights down there? I understand what you're saying. So but why is this spot? more well lit than down there. I mean, what was so detrimental between me stopping right there and stopping right here? I, 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 well, actually, I I'd like to ask you that. Why did you keep driving? I had no, I just told you that. Mm -hmm. I just told you that. Why There's would I stop There's a lot of moving, the moving around in that car. You just looked in it. There's a lot of moving around whenever, when? uh, whenever I have my lights I on. I rolled the windows down, put my job license, my registration mm -hmm. out the window. That's the I supposed to ask when y'all first pushed somebody over, right? Y'all ain't do none of that. Come on, I'm not posting to stop a law line citizen. Shut your mouth. Don't get all f***ing loud with me. That ain't going to change nothing. Hey, here. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I'm having a conversation Shh. with you, right? No, you're trying to talk over me. and You're trying to set up a okay. defense for yourself. Because what you did is called fail to obey. It's a fleeing charge, and it's a felony three. Okay. If you'd like to go to jail on a felony charge, I'm good with it. I will not. All right. Well, then quit trying to talk your way out of this and just talk to me and actually tell the truth. Because I'm not stupid. Okay? I know you're trying to play me. Okay. So why didn't you stop? I just told you why I didn't stop. Because you think, that you're, no you think you're smarter reason. than everyone else. Look what you just did to me. You just snatched me out of my car. I rolled the one that's not gave my license and my registration. You ain't read me no right. You snatched me out of the car. You, you're you, damn right I did. Why okay. did I do that? Why? I don't know. I how had the because, slightest idea. How about because? Run my name. For 300 yards, name. I had my lights. Did you? How many different signs did I turn Listen, on? I'm a black man in America. I'm asking you a I question. I'm terrified of the police. Mr. Black Man, I'm asking you a question. How many times? Did, how many different sirens did I turn on? How many times did I lay on my horn? I have this. Like when you said pull over, I pulled over. You said throw the keys out of the car. I complied. No, when I said pull over it was back there when I turned my lights and sirens on. Get in the car. Okay. Damn, you know the more. I'm Get in the car. Shut your mouth. This scenario discusses the actions of Officer Justin Peppers from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Reported by First Coast News, Peppers has a history of being overly aggressive during traffic stops and other interactions with the public. Recently, he was involved in the arrest of a black military veteran where his behavior was deemed unprofessional. After body camera footage surfaced and 14 individuals filed complaints, an internal affairs investigation was conducted revealing Peppers' repeated violations of department policies. He was also flagged by the prosecutor's office for discrepancies between his reports and body camera footage in previous cases. 
Another incident from 2019 involving the use of force by Peppers was also reviewed, where he punched a handcuffed man in the face after the man struggled with a spit mask. This incident is reminiscent of a widely shared video showing a similar situation resulting in another officer's firing. The scenario highlights the importance of public oversight and platforms like YouTube in exposing police misconduct. It also discusses the challenges in holding officers accountable, particularly due to qualified immunity and the need for federal lawsuits under Section 1983 to address constitutional violations. Additionally, it suggests potential violations of the Fourth and First Amendments in Pepper's conduct and stresses the importance of continued complaints and evidence against him despite potential obstacles like biased investigations and censorship of videos. On May 1, 2021, Navy veteran Mr. James sat outside a closed bar, waiting for his Uber to arrive and safely take him home. Having had a few drinks, Mr. James wisely chose not to drive himself. However, he was soon approached by an officer from the Wheat Ridge Police Department in a patrol car who found Mr. James suspicious. The entire interaction was recorded on the officer's body camera as the officer promptly asked Mr. James for his ID. How you doing? What's going on? Waiting for your Uber? Yeah. Do you have an idea I can take a look at, man? No, you don't. I don't. I'm not doing anything wrong. Well, you're sitting in front of a closed bar and I can I'm see you in I'm waiting on my Uber, my friend. Let me see your ID. No. Okay. We can do this one of two ways, sir. We can okay, do I'm this being, one of I'm being many ways. I'm being respectful to you. I'm sitting here waiting on my Uber. I am doing nothing Show me on wrong. your phone that your Uber's coming. You know what? I want to break out my camera right now. Go ahead, mine's running as well. I want to start well. filming you. Mine's running as well. I am not doing anything wrong. Okay, well. I'm doing everything right. Not drinking and driving. And why are you, why are you messing with me? I'm not messing with you, sir. You're sitting no, in front no, of a closed you bar. Are. You're sitting in front of a closed bar. You are messing with a Navy veteran that is waiting on an Uber. So I'm gonna ask you one more time. That is doing nothing Navy. wrong. Can I see your ID? No, you can't. You're drunk in public. No, I'm not drunk in public. Give me your ID. I'm giving you a lawful order. Immediately, it's evident that the officer attempted to infringe upon Mr. James's basic rights. Despite Mr. James having committed no wrongdoing or crime whatsoever, the officer persisted in demanding identification, citing it as a lawful order under Colorado Revised Statute 163103, allowing a peace officer to detain individuals reasonably suspected of committing, having committed, or about to commit a crime, and requiring them to provide their name, address, identification if available, and an explanation of their actions, However, it's important to note that Mr. James was simply seated in a public area outside a bar, not engaging in any illegal activity. Additionally, sitting on a public bench is not a criminal offense. Therefore, the officer lacked reasonable suspicion to detain or question Mr. James, rendering this detention unlawful. Nonetheless, the situation quickly escalated when the officer chose to restrain and handcuff Mr. James as soon as he began recording the incident on his phone. Okay, stand I up. I am not doing stand anything up. wrong. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. What are you doing? I'm sitting put there doing nothing. Put your, hands, put your other hand behind your back. Set your phone down, sir, and put your hand behind your back. I'm sitting here doing nothing. Waiting on the Uber. Are you kidding me? Huh? Hey, all I asked for was to see your Uber. I'm doing nothing. And you nothing. want to argue and you're intoxicated. I, hey, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think you're making good choices, sir. I'm waiting on my Uber, which I, is the sir, best choice. Sir, all I was trying to do was verify. The worst choice would be sir, driving. Sir, all I was trying to do was verify your Uber. Was that right or wrong? Well, if you um, uh, lock me, I'll show you the Uber. Well, that's what I, how many times did I ask for that, sir? Huh? 
Sir. Yes, sir. If I have I done anything illegal. Well, you're intoxicated in public. I'm sitting okay, on a bench not... waiting on right, my Uber. Right, at a closed business in a high crime waiting area. Waiting okay? on my so, Uber. So, sir, sir, I have no idea who you are or what you're doing, and it's my job to find out. So all I did was wanted to have a conversation with you, and you won't give me any information at all, and it's obvious that you're intoxicated. Right? That is why I am waiting on Uber. Right, and how many times did I ask you to see your Uber? I tell you, my body camera. All right, well, unlock me if it's that and, big and a deal, and I'll show you my Uber. All you want to do, all you want to do, is film me and argue. The footage shows Mr. James placing handcuffs on himself while being intoxicated in public. It's evident that Mr. James was under the influence of alcohol. However, the issue here lies in the officer's action of detaining him for public intoxication. According to Colorado Revised Statute 2781-117. It explicitly states that local authorities cannot create or enforce laws that criminalize being intoxicated or having an alcohol use disorder as the sole basis for penalties or sanctions. Essentially, local governments are not allowed to make it illegal to consume alcohol or penalize individuals solely for being intoxicated or having an alcohol use disorder, especially when no other crime has been committed. Therefore, it's undeniable that the officer unlawfully detained Mr. James. I have done nothing wrong. I'm sitting here minding my own business. Sir, I'm, True just, or doing, I'm just doing my job. You are with a Navy veteran. Sir, step over here. Just sitting step here minding here. my step own over business. Here. Step over here. Sir, you can't even walk. I, I was, I'm sitting you here minding my own you business. You can't even walk, sir. What are you guys doing? You can't even walk. You're what? intoxicated. No, 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 You're a danger no, to yourself. No, no, no. I'm sitting here minding my own business. What are you guys doing? I'm waiting on my Uber. Sir, you're going to go to detox. You can't even walk. Oh, my God, okay. dude. You me and let me know if I can walk or not. Well, it's pretty obvious that you can't. You guys, are you serious? I have an Uber coming. I have an Uber coming. Double lock those are not double locked. Guys, seriously, stop. I have an Uber coming. Please stop. Just let me go home. I have an Uber coming. I have I was sitting in the chair not Sir? bothering anybody. Sir, I was trying to be reasonable with you. Oh my it's God, you're, dude, you're I am a Navy trusted. veteran. Okay, thank you for your service. And I'm just sitting there minding my own business. Right, at a closed business. And so waiting like on my Uber. Sir, and all I, asked, all I asked was for you to verify it. All I asked you to show me it on your phone, and I'm good with that. Okay, but you refuse to do that. It's important to note that Mr. James wasn't required to present any evidence to the officer regarding whether he had indeed booked an Uber or not. The officer had no relevance to Mr. James's actions or his reason for sitting on a bench that night. In fact, one could argue that the officer violated Mr. James's Fourth Amendment rights, which ensure people's security in their persons, homes, papers, and effects against unjustified searches and seizures. According to the Fourth Amendment, warrants should only be issued based on probable cause. As we already know, the officer lacked any probable cause confirming that Mr. James's rights were infringed upon. Subsequently, the two officers at the scene proceeded to frisk Mr. James before placing him in the back seat of the patrol vehicle. Hi, sir. I mean, really, you okay. do this to a Navy veteran? Sir, I'm sitting on a chair. Have a seat in the car. Oh my God, man. Are you guys serious? I've done nothing. I have no idea who he is. Do you have any weapons on sir? No, I don't have any weapons on me. Just hold on. I have no weapons on me. I mean, I can't believe you guys are doing this. I seriously can't do a Navy veteran. Are you really doing this to a Navy veteran? I'll grab his phone.
was trying to be reasonable. The officer deactivated his body camera after wrongfully taking Mr. James's phone. Three minutes later, his body cam resumed recording, and both officers present engaged in a conversation while their body cameras remained inactive. Suddenly, the officers decided to allow Mr. James to prove that he had indeed booked an Uber, seeming to retract their unconstitutional actions. The first officer even mentioned releasing Mr. James if he could verify the Uber booking. It seemed as though the officers were aware they had detained Mr. James without cause and now wished to release him, making it seem like a standard procedure. James. James, listen to me. Didn't drink and drive. Thank you for that. Made the right choice. And you guys come up and just shake me down. James. Navy veteran. James. Combat medic. James. Talk to me. I mean, I'm just sitting there. Waiting on my Uber. My Uber is Is there anybody there. sober that can come get you? You're not listening. You're not, sir. I'm I not... called an Uber. Well, you can't the call. Uber was two you, minutes away. You can't. You before can't. You shook me down. James, we've been here for 10 minutes and they're not here. You can't call Uber. Okay? That's Where's not the way. Phone? That's not, not the way Uber works. He's Where's got your phone. phone. He's got your right. phone right there. Look it up. Whether I call an Uber or not. You can't call them on the phone. Did you do it through an app or did you call them? I did through the Uber app. All right, so how do I get into your phone? 6969. If they're coming, man, I'll release you to them. But if six, not. 6969. Nine. But if they're not, you're not and leaving us much choice. look out Uber. Listen, fellas. The green button. I am a former combat medic. James, thank you for your there, service. How do you, uh. And I, I'm not do, going to lie to you. How do I go? Six nine six nine. He's in it. Uber. Where do I, I search that? I don't have this. Go to the phone. Uber app. Just scroll through till you find the Uber app. Listen, fellas, you should not be doing this to a combat medic veteran. I was sitting there minding my own business. Is he coming? I okay, he's James. I respect James. you guys. James. I respect James. your job. James, listen to me for a minute. I appreciate that. It says it's five minutes away. If he's here in five minutes, we will release you to that Uber. Okay. Okay? Please. Let me out of here and come me out of here. When, when the Uber gets here, we'll do that. Right after Mr. James demonstrated that he was waiting for an Uber due to arrive in five minutes, the officer swiftly shifted to a composed demeanor. He indicated that he would release Mr. James, yet in truth, the officer was needlessly prolonging an entirely illegal detention. In fact, Mr. James should never have been detained initially. Okay, this is all James, James, Fellas, listen, James, you, man, James, uh, James, no James, listen to me. All you had to do was show me this in the first place. Listen. Okay, and I would have waited with you. Listen, here's the problem. Okay. You're not, you're not hearing me, sir. No, I'm hearing you, brother. Okay. I'm hearing you, I'm hearing you but, I, but I'm a former kind of combat medic. Yep. That's me. Thanks for your service. And I got a little, I felt a little intimidated, man. Like, I wasn't really expected. Sorry you felt that way, James. Yeah, James, that so, wasn't my intention. We're, we're, we were I would never do it to you guys. We were concerned for your welfare. That's why we contacted you. Right. We didn't want you walking well, off you. into the street. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. And now that we know that there's a sober driver, we're okay with releasing you. All right. You understand that I'm a former combat navy medic. Yeah, I understand that. I and thank you for your service. And you just... Okay. And made the right choice. We appreciate that, sir. I agree, and I appreciate that, really. All. But here's the thing. Are you guys badgering? But here's the thing. Is, 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 is a lot of people lie to the cops? And as far as I know, I, I'm contacting you drunk, which is, it's fine, you're drunk. That's not a big deal. But if you wander out in this street and get hit, then it's on me, man. Okay? It's on me. And I don't, I don't want you to get hit by a car. I understand. I so, I understand. So hang tight. As soon as Uber gets here, dude, I have no problem. I have no problem releasing you to the Uber. Well, can you do me a favor and uncut me before? Because 
things out for brother. I've I get you. Laws. I get you. You're going to be cooperative? Yeah, absolutely. I'm good with it if you are. Yeah. I'm good with that, man. Okay, just hey, as long as you and I agree that, oh, that you're going to be cool, yeah. right? I want to have one more thing to say, brother. <laughs> no, you can talk all you want. At this juncture, the officer not only acknowledged that there was no issue with Mr. James being intoxicated, but also manipulated the situation to create the impression that he had taken those actions solely to ensure Mr. James's safety. Clearly, this was untrue. However, Mr. James was eventually uncuffed, and the officer now exhibited an overly magnified level of kindness after egregiously violating his rights. So you can get that other one off, man. Eh? It's easier if he spins you around so you're not. Anyway, I didn't, listen, I didn't mean to be offensive. I get you, man. I was it's doing the right offense. thing, I was sitting. There. And, I, and I commend you for that. I, I yeah. really do, I commend you for that, you're good. And and so hey, give, tell you something. Give us, pull up that Uber app. Iraq right veteran. Okay. Thanks for your service, man. Pull up that app on your phone again so we can see how far that Uber driver is. Where is my it's, phone? it's up here. It said five minutes when we looked at it, so let's see where they're at. So how many minutes? Cool. Minutes I'm good with that, man. I just wanted to, I just because it said five minutes and yes, they must be. I didn't mean to be offensive, man. I I just, you were offensive, I was man. Minding my own business. You're not offensive. Yeah, but you have to understand, man. The wrong I, thing to do is drive, right? Agreed. So the let me let me tell worst you. Worst thing to do, let me tell which you, I let, won't do. Let me tell you a quick story. Um, a few years back, I had somebody over here that was stabbed just like that. So I wouldn't be doing my job, man, if I didn't check to make sure you're okay. Like All right. I said, if you didn't have Uber coming and you walk out into 44th and get hit by a drunk driver or somebody's not paying attention, right. then that's on me, man, and I'm not. And you're a veteran, dude. I'm not gonna. I don't I want that on my. I don't want here. I don't want that on my conscience. Maybe man. your thing you got a little out of hand. Dude. No, I no have been more... there was nothing out of hand. No, maybe you shot. I, I didn't understand what was going on. I understand. What yeah. I thought was I'm sitting on a, chair, on a bench, not driving, as a veteran because you know what? When I was in the military, I was a crazy, you know, drinking all the time. <laughs> but I thought, you know, I'm sitting here minding my own business. And you know, waiting on my Uber. And I'm sorry, dude, if I offended you. No, you, dude, you didn't offend me. See, the thing is, you're like an hour past last call, so. Well, like yeah. once again, Personally, choices. I agree. Life is about choices. I agree, man. And the choice is don't drink and drive. I agree, and, I and that's a smart choice. Out of as the officers kept up their casual conversation with Mr. James, his Uber finally pulled up, allowing him to depart. In the subsequent footage, one officer was recorded briefing the Uber driver on the recent events. This seemed like an attempt to validate the officer's unjust actions, portraying them as acceptable. It's evident how the officers manipulated the intoxicated Mr. James into believing they were merely fulfilling their duty to safeguard him. However, we shouldn't overlook the fact that moments earlier, the initial officer had physically restrained Mr. James without justification. Are you Uber? Yeah. I got your guy's over here. Is he okay? Yeah. Okay. No, he's just, he's sitting in front of a closed bar. Uh-huh. Hunched over a little bit. He's had a little bit to drink, so. Okay. He's good. Okay. okay. He's good. He just had a good time. He's not he's not creating any problems, but as a police officer, I drive by and see somebody hunched over on a bench outside of a closed bar, and yeah. that's a clue. Right. All right, man. All right. You All right. Here you go, dude. Hey. They're going to get you home, brother. Never lied to you. Nope, you didn't. I appreciate that. James? They're going to get you. Yeah. Yep, that's James. Right. Thanks, man. Hey, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Shortly after this incident occurred, Mr. James purportedly lodged a formal complaint with the Wheat Ridge Police Department. Their response was astounding. It was reported that the Wheat Ridge Police asserted their actions were legally justified under two state statutes. These statutes purportedly grant peace officers the authority to detain individuals suspected of committing a crime or those who are intoxicated or under the influence. In the latter scenario, citizens can be detained with the intention of transporting them to a detoxification center. 
Mr. James was interviewed and he conveyed his perspective on the entire encounter. 225, I called Uber. Okay, at 227, the Wheat Ridge Police Department showed up and started harassing me. I believe in the, you know, the Bill of Rights. I didn't feel that, it, you know, I had, there was justification for me to show my ID. I wasn't committing any crime. Would you do anything differently and immediately just say, here's my ID, fine? No, I would not. I would not just hand over my ID when I am not committing any crimes. You know, that's why we have rights in this country. That's, you know, they're called civil rights. As of the date of this recording, Mr. James has informed the public that he was considering hiring a lawyer to continue pursuing the case of wrongful detainment. Both officers supposedly remain on active duty at the Wheat Ridge Police Department without facing any consequences for their actions. On October 13, 2021, Officer Sierra Brooks from the Gastonia Police Department swiftly answered a 911 call in Gastonia, North Carolina. The report claimed that an individual purportedly exploiting dogs to evoke sympathy and garner money was stationed at an intersection. Upon arrival at the scene, Officer Brooks encountered Joshua Rohrer, a disabled and homeless veteran, along with his prescribed service dog, Sunshine, standing on the median of a thoroughfare. The ensuing exchange between the officer and the veteran, along with their loyal service companion, was documented by the officer's body camera. I did. I just saw you take money from that car. Yeah, you saw me take money, but you didn't see me ask. Me. All right, let me get your ID, okay? Um, you can't ask for my ID. If yes, I can. Giving me money. Okay, get your dog, okay? Yes, I can. It's called panhandling. You can give me your ID, or you can go to jail for RDO. Which one you want to do? What's the ID for that? Because I'm about to write you a citation. For what? For panhandling. That's not panhandling. Yes, it is. If you come up to me and give me money, you walk out to the car because they stopped. Give me your you ID. You saw the whole situation. Give me your ID, or you're going to jail for RDO, which is resist, delay, obstruct. Okay. You're gonna write a disabled veteran that's living in the woods a ticket. Yes, because I asked you not to do it, and you I did. I didn't do it. You and see I sit me? There I come watch here. I'm packing my stuff up. I sit there and watch. You watch me walk up the sidewalk. To Baker Third City. I'm out with that, that subject. Like you, you literally watch me walk up the sidewalk. Okay, you give me your ID. Car stop. I'm recording. You, you, you violate a city no, ordinance. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. There's no city ordinance that says somebody can't give me money. Because I and did you not obstructed have. traffic. No, I didn't. I probably need a sergeant out here. He's refusing to give me his ID. Now you see we got a sergeant and multiple units on their way out here. And I can almost guarantee you it's, it's, it's not going to go the way you want it to go. I want to talk to a supervisor. He's on his way out here. Just saw with him. I told him he couldn't be on the median. Yeah, and that's and why I was packing my stuff up. Walk out to a car to get money. Yeah, yeah I saw him at the Circle K the other day uh, with a car. So I mean, now he's refusing to give me his ID because I'm going to write him a She's, the she's trying to write me a ticket because I was walking up this, packing no. up. She told me to pack up. I told and you. I was literally I rolling up my roll. People you, give me money without me okay. asking. I don't have because, to Because, let me tell you, because you're not a lawyer. What? You can get one, but I can tell you how the law works. Packed Listen, up like you told I, me I just want you to know, you can go to jail for this ordinance. Please. If you continue to argue with officers, you're going to go to jail, and, we are, and we are going to call animal control for your dog. You got it? You cannot be here. That's fine. I told her I was okay, leaving. Okay, and I interpreted you asking for money because you're yeah, like that this, is, that you, you walked out to the car. You're writing yeah, yeah, a ticket yeah. for a crime I your ID? Can we get your ID? Dude, I didn't commit this crime. But you're also in the median after I've told you not to be here before. And that's why I was vacating because she asked me to leave. And I was literally walking up asked, here. Asked I didn't ask anybody money. for money. Okay. That's right. I'm taking this to trial. You can. Okay. You're wasting taxpayer dollars. Okay. Well, I pay my taxes too. Officer Morris Taylor shows up at a scene where the cops claim Mr. Rohrer broke a city rule by doing some street fundraising. Mr. Rohrer says he's innocent pointing to a specific part of the Gastonia laws to back himself up. The law says it's illegal to aggressively ask for money or bother people, but Mr. Rohrer argues that he didn't harass or force himself on anyone according to the law's definitions. But there's another rule that says you can't hang around in the streets to ask for money from stopped cars, and Mr. Rohrer probably broke that one. Even so, there's a good chance that a court would say both Gastonia rules about begging are against the First Amendment. The Supreme Court said in the Reed v. Town of Gilbert case that laws targeting speech based on content are usually unconstitutional unless they're really necessary for a big reason. This decision likely means that both Gastonia rules would be considered unconstitutional 
when applied to Mr. Rohrer under the First Amendment. There you go. No, we, your state ID, not your VA this ID. This isn't valid. It's not valid. I, I need your state ID, not your VA ID. I'm going to ask you one more time. It's your not book. even valid. Give me it's your state ID. Uh, turn around. You're being arrested. Whoa, what turn the around, dude? Turn around. Are you kidding me? Turn around. Do you turn around. see this? Turn around. Somebody help me. Turn around. Hey, what are you doing? Stop. What are you doing? Uh, Mama. Hey. What are you doing? Hey. Call your dog off. 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 Sir, call your dog off. Call your dog off. He just bit me. He bit me. Call your dog off. To Charlie. Call your dog off. Call your dog off. Call your dog off. Call your dog off. We need, we need. To Charlie Ten City, we need more units. We need more units. Stop! are you doing? A cop named Officer Taylor used a taser on a dog named Sunshine, saying the dog bit him. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals said, dogs are like personal property and are protected under the Fourth Amendment. Past cases, like Almond v. City of High Point, said interfering with a dog without a warrant must be reasonable. But in the 2020 Ray v. Rand case, shooting a dog can be unconstitutional if the officer's actions aren't reasonable. In this situation, Officer Taylor used a taser on Sunshine, a service animal even though the body camera showed no signs of aggression. Sunshine, trained to help people with PTSD, seemed to be responding to distress without being a threat. A complaint disputed Taylor's claim of being bitten, saying Sunshine acted non-aggressively. If the court agrees Sunshine wasn't a threat, it might say Officer Taylor using the taser was not reasonable. Turn around. Record them. Turn around, sir. Help me! To Charlie 10 said he tased the floor with the dog. No, Charlie 10 was bit by the dog. It bit my foot and I knew it was going to bite you, so. Charlie 10 was bit by the dog. 10-4, it didn't break my boot, but it bit my boot. Relax and give me your hand. Why are you doing this? I haven't done anything. This dog is never taking I get you, but I have to do what I have to do. The dog bit me, okay? No, it didn't because you shot him with a taser. His they ID. asked me for my ID, ID and then he grabbed me and tackled me. Because you wouldn't give it to me. Floor. I was in so the process of handing it to you. This dog has been out here for months. His dog has never been Okay, to okay, we're doing what we have they to do. They tased my dog. We okay, have to do our job. Y'all didn't see the whole story, so just back Dude, up. Dude, you didn't either. Y'all are harassing me. Don't beat me right now. No, you didn't hear that. Thank, Thank you, I need your information. <laughs> Somebody please help me, they're trying to kidnap me. I don't know what they do with Sunshine. Where's my dog? Sunshine Ray. I need my dog, she's my medical device. I get, but, but when, we're, when we're trying to detain the owner, of course the dog's going, and I asked him to call his dog off. The dog got on the hood of the car and the dog began barking. The dog initially barked and bit, bit my boot, but it didn't break my boot. I did not want this dog to bite my partner, you understand? Okay, we asked for his ID, he refused us to give us his ID. Officer Taylor arrested Mr. Rohrer because he refused to show his ID, which Officer Taylor said was needed to give him a citation. Even though Mr. Rohrer showed his federal veteran ID, citing a specific law, Officer Taylor still arrested him for obstructing official duties which is a class two misdemeanor. In previous legal cases, it was established that not providing ID during a lawful stop could be considered obstruction. However, refusing to provide a social security number doesn't automatically justify arrest unless it hinders the arrest process. In a recent case, a court upheld a resisting conviction when a person didn't provide verifiable identification during a police stop. Mr. Rohrer offered a verifiable ID immediately, lacking only his address. The need for a state ID is questioned, especially since Mr. Rohrer's expired state ID didn't have the correct address. A case from 2020 stressed that strong evidence is required to prove willful obstruction. If a person resists arrest based on their belief in their rights, the charge should be dismissed. Applying this, Mr. Rohrer could have a strong defense against resisting charges, given his possession of a veteran ID and the questionable need for a state ID. I'm not sure. She's mad because he's here all the time and they don't like they don't like the fact that we had to do what we had to do. Please help me. 
I'll taste good. Yo, yeah, you man, you yeah, it didn't break. His dog initially bit me. No, you it didn't break my, my boot. dog. It got my on dog the thing was and running I, and the dog, away and he and shot her dog. while she was running I didn't, away. I didn't shoot her. I tased her. Yes, he did. He tased her. For no my camera's reason. still on. My dog never hurt and you seen the dog go which way? It ran down this way somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good, but uh. The EMS thing. No, it's. We're good. I'll talk to you later. We're good. Mr. Rohr got into legal trouble facing charges like panhandling and resisting arrest in October 2021. But in July 2022, as part of a deal, those charges were dropped and he pleaded guilty to driving with a revoked license, getting a two-year probation. As part of probation, he had to join the Catawba County Veterans Treatment Court in June 2023. Later, Mr. Rohrer sued Officer Taylor, Officer Brooks, the city of Gastonia, and others claiming they violated his rights during his arrest, including using too much force, violating the ADA, and causing emotional distress. The lawsuit also mentioned the death of his service animal, Sunshine, during the arrest, which he said happened because she was tased. After the incident, Mr. Rohrer had mental health issues and started therapy. The officers faced consequences. Brooks got a three-day suspension and Taylor resigned but no criminal charges were filed. The district attorney said it was mercy for Mr. Rohrer. In June 2023, Mr. Rohrer talked about his trauma in a public statement, criticizing the police department for a history of mistreatment. He accused officers and the department of violating his rights, enforcing unfair laws, and using too much force on Sunshine. Despite his mental health struggles, he pursued justice through the lawsuit getting support for holding officials accountable. On July 19th, 2021, a guy named Mr. Jeff, who's been auditing and checking out police stuff for over a decade, went to Port Wentworth City Hall, carrying a sign that said, God bless the homeless vets. After doing his thing inside the city hall, he went outside and peacefully held up his sign. The state employees inside got uncomfortable and complained to a cop on the premises so Sergeant Heminger from the Port Wentworth Police Department came over to talk to Mr. Jeff. He, he's a restaurant. Yeah. She told him, yeah, you could go upstairs, but he needed to go. Okay. He just went on out the door and now he's kind of in the house. Now. All right, I'll ask him. So just sweetly ask him to just yeah. float along. Yes, ma'am. I'll take care of that for you. <laughs> I love serving multi-purpose rolls. Just to let you know, we also reset the uh, AC to 72 upstairs. Oh, so it'll be cool good. for you guys. for the. Good. Thank you. Yeah, but you just stand out with everything. All right. Let's see what's going on. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? All right. Doing okay? Yes. All right. Um, what's your first name? Sergeant Hemming. Hemming? Yeah. Uh, my name's first name Jeff. Jeff. Jeff? Yes, sir. All right, Jeff. Hey man, um, first I appreciate I appreciate the sign. That's awesome. Hard of hearing, so can you speak up? Yes, sir. So I appreciate the sign. That's pretty awesome. Um, the uh, the ladies in front have asked me if you'd go find another location to hang out. Uh, they're not doing anything wrong. They're not breaking any laws by any means. Okay. They just right here in front of City Hall is a little bit different area. You know what I'm saying? To city property. Um, city property. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, you can go. Legitimately, you can go at the corner on the other side of the grass. You can go anywhere along the side of the road. Yes. Just, this is city property, so they were asking if you don't mind, just find another location. Uh, you're not bringing any laws, you're not in trouble. Yeah, I'd rather not. I'd well, rather just hang out here. Well, that's kind of the issue. They don't, they don't want you sitting out here. So, because it's city property, so they can ask you to leave if they want you to. But you said I'm not breaking any laws? Well, no, it's, but they're also, the, the city owns the property, so they can ask you just to hang out somewhere else. I'd rather not. Okay. All right. Sounds good. In a recorded encounter, Sergeant Heminger told Mr. Jeff he wasn't breaking any laws, but asked him to leave because employees inside were uncomfortable. The employees argued it was city property, giving them the right to ask him to leave. However, Mr. Jeff's actions were protected by the First Amendment, covering his right to assembly and speech. Public city property generally allows people to express their views unless they're breaking the law. After going back into the building, Sergeant Heminger called for backup, and the employee's seemingly unserious attitude raised doubts about the legitimacy of their concerns. Sure, I can't. I can't. 
Okay, we're hoping out with a 71 in front of City Hall. Uh, non combative, we can start me a patrol unit. Well, we're going to set up 413 City Hall, Alright, so, technically he's not breaking any laws, but he's also property, so yes. we can ask him to leave. Yes. Um, and that's why I told him, I said, you're not breaking any laws, the ladies don't feel comfortable with you standing out here. Got it. I said, you're welcome to go stand over in the corner, down there, down there, down there. So now, if he doesn't leave, it's trespassing. Okay. Well, hopefully he will just go He's already, well, he's like, I don't, I don't feel like leaving. I was like, well, I get that, but he's, he's like, I'd rather not. Feel like it? That what he, he, doesn't, he, doesn't really, he doesn't rather not. He was polite about it. And I said, well, you're not breaking any laws, but you're all on city property. So it's owned by the city. If they want, they don't feel comfortable with you standing out here, even though you're spreading a good message, you have to leave the property. Yeah, he can't stand in front of my city hall to my sports. I'm going to like, Well, I mean, we if it wasn't city property. But, it, but considering it's city property, it's considered private property. Yes. So he can go stand on the roadside anywhere else. So I got a patrol unit coming. That way I can talk to him some more and see what's going on. And then, big, and then I gotta come see you. <laughs> Sergeant Heminger repeatedly affirmed that Mr. Jeff had not committed any wrongdoing. Despite this, he threatened to trespass Mr. Jeff from city property if he did not vacate. Another notable aspect is Sergeant Heminger informing employees that city property is deemed private because it's owned by the city. However, he failed to realize the contradiction in his statements. To clarify, it is stated that public property encompasses all properties owned or held by the city government's departments, commissions, or agencies. According to this definition, Mr. Jeff was exercising his rights on public property and could not be trespassed as there was no unlawful activity, a fact Sergeant Heminger had acknowledged numerous times. Nevertheless, Sergeant Heminger made a second attempt to confront Mr. Jeff aiming to escalate the situation. He persistently misquoted the law and attempted to infringe upon Mr. Jeff's rights. Put in my heart to stand right here and spread the message, God bless on but... I'm all, I'm all for that, I'm all for you recording, I got no issue with that, okay? All right. I got my body cam on, so... Okay. I don't even know what that's for, I'm probably should get across the intersection. Anyways, so what I did was I called for a patrol unit because I'm actually working for the code enforcement section, okay? I'm still a police officer. This is city property, okay? okay. And you do have the right to spread your message anywhere you want unless it's private property. Okay. Then they have the right to ask you to leave. They can't tell you to turn your sign up or anything like that, right. but that's the whole point of why I was out here talking to you. The ladies didn't feel comfortable with somebody just hanging out in front of the city hall. Okay. Um, and being that it's on city property, they have the right to ask you to leave. You can go stand on that corner. You can go stand anywhere it's not actual city property and do as you wish, brother, and spread the message. So that's, that's all I'm saying, okay? Now, if you refuse to leave, then it would be trespassing, and then you'd be in trouble. So I'm asking you nicely if just to relocate. That's all I'm asking you to do. Now, you can go spread that message with love any way you want, other than city property right here. At this juncture, Sergeant Heminger essentially warned Mr. Jeff with a potential trespass notice if he refused to vacate the city property, citing Georgia Code Section the 16th of July 21. This statute defines criminal trespass as the deliberate entry onto another person's land or premises or into any part of a vehicle, railroad car, aircraft, or watercraft without authorization and for an illegal purpose. Hence, it can be inferred that if Sergeant Heminger were to charge Mr. Jeff with trespassing, it would constitute a blatantly unlawful arrest since Mr. Jeff was not only on public property but also did nothing unlawful. Subsequently, an additional patrol unit arrived, triggering an abrupt shift in Sergeant Heminger's demeanor from calm to overly aggressive, as will be evident. Is that, you understand what I'm saying? This is city property? This, this, all this is city hall. It's just city property. All right. Am I being trespassed? As of now, you are. Give me your ID. Uh, now, now, we're, now it's an investigation. I'm, I'm I want your ID. No? Give me your ID. You're not free to go now. Because now you want to play the game. Go ahead and give me your identification. If you're trespassing me, I'll leave. Give me that identification or you're going to jail. Give me my... Give me my identification so I can identify you and I can trespass you. Then you can leave. If, if I'm not going to ask I'll you a third time. If I get arrested, I'll, go to, I'll lose my job. I'm not trying to arrest you. I'm trying to get you to comply with me and you're trying to refuse to do that. So listen to me carefully. I want your identification so I can identify what you and trespass you. What crime do you suspect me of? Sir? What crime do you suspect me of? You're, you're failing to, to follow a lawful order, which is they've asked you to leave city property or asked me to ask you to leave. You're refusing to do so. Now I'm going to trespass you from the property. 
Because I asked you three times last day to can step off somewhere else. Leave, no, now you wanted to refuse, so now I'm going to identify you and I can trespass you. If I don't give you my ID, I'll go to jail. That's exactly correct. You'll sure. be arrested, you'll be fingerprinted and released. So all I want is your identification. No, because you, not because of the sign, but because you failed to comply with my investigation. Which was, I asked you to leave nicely initially, you wanted to play the game with me, now I'm playing the game with you. Well, I said Let I'm me have your identity. Stop. I'm Let me have your identification. I said I was identification. I, I'm not going to say it. Handcuffs. Turn around. I'm engaged in constitutional Turn around. Let me see your sign. You put your phone in your pocket. What Sergeant Heminger did was a clear infringement of Mr. Jeff's constitutional rights. In fact, referring to Mr. Jeff's efforts to protect his rights as mere games speaks volumes about how certain police officers perceive this matter. Furthermore, Sergeant Heminger unlawfully demanded Mr. Jeff's identification, threatening him with arrest if he failed to comply, constituting yet another violation of his rights. You see how this easy would have been? Here, officer, here's my ID. Now, I probably would have trespassed you because I asked you at least five to six times to step off the property. You said politely that you didn't want to do that. I didn't have a problem with that. I went back and asked the ladies, I said, what do you feel comfortable with? They said, no, I don't feel comfortable with standing out here because there's a bunch of ladies that work in here. Even though you're not being violent, they have the right to ask you to leave, partner. All you had to do is go step off to the next land property over there and you could spread the message of love all day. You understand what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to bust your chops, man. I'm just doing my job. I'm gonna remain silent. Okay, you have that right. You have that right. The only thing you have to answer is name, date of birth, and about your current address. Is all that current on your license? Yes, it is. Okay. All right. All right, hang tight for a second. I'm going to grab your sign so we can take that with you, okay? Just witnessed Mr. Jeff got arrested for simply refusing to let his rights be violated while waiting outside. Sergeant Heminger went back into the building to provide the employees with a brief update. Yeah, he's under arrest. Um, I asked him four more times. I said, listen, you're not breaking the law essentially by standing here with a sign. I said, but ladies don't feel comfortable with you being on, on the property because it's just a bunch of ladies, even though you're not being disorderly. I said, they have the right to ask you to leave. It is city hall property. All you have to do is go to the next corner over here, out on towards the road. As long as you're not on the roadway, you can go anywhere else, and I'll let you walk off. So he wanted, he's like, he started playing the game. Well, am I being trespassed? I was like, you know what, let me have your ID. And they refused to give it to me, so now it was being charged with uh, obstruction. So, yeah, he's like, well, I'll just leave now. I was like, no, 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 we're past that point now. We're playing oh, the game. Oh, see, gave you a chance. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to take you sign everything with him. He's going to end up getting released, but I'm going to have him banned from the property. Good. From City Hall. Okay? Yes, ma'am. It's important to highlight that this experience infringed not only on Mr. Jeff's First Amendment right, but also on his Fourth Amendment right, which safeguards individuals from unwarranted searches and seizures, Considering that an arrest is legally considered a seizure, this unquestionably constituted an unjustifiable seizure. Right, but they asked you just to go stand in the corner, man. It's just because there's a bunch of ladies up here. That's all it was. And then you tried to play the game with me, right? No, but you, you don't understand. I have to keep you talking to her at vets. I mean, we care about it, but, but we also have rules. I mean, you can't just do what you want. And then when I asked you to leave, and you said, well, I'm being trespassed, I said, well, not yet, but I'm trying to help you just walk off. And he said, well, I'm being trespassed. I said, okay, now we're going to play the game. And then you refused to give me your ID. That was a big problem. Now you're under arrest for obstruction. Can one of y'all put him in the car? Follow this officer over here. I asked him like six times, I said, look, you're not, you're not really breaking the law. I said, other than the fact that the ladies don't want you sitting here in front of City Hall, you can spread the love anywhere you want to. Sure. Just go stand on that corner, down there, anywhere else. I said, so just, I need you to leave, dude, because they don't feel comfortable with you being up here. City property, they can ask you to leave. City property, and he'd be fine. Yeah. So after like six times of that, I was like, yo, uh, he says, I said, well, okay, you know what? I said, are you going to leave? He's like, am I being trespassed? I was like, now we're playing the game. Okay, let me have your ID. He refused three times to give it to me. Done. Go ahead. Just showing the sign. Normally not breaking any laws. The ladies up here didn't feel comfortable with him just standing up here. So they were asking me to ask him to leave. And I'm like, all right, cool. It's city property. No problem. And uh, he wasn't up here doing any business or anything like that. And so I go start talking to him. And uh, he's playing the game. And after asking him four or five times to leave, and he gave me his first name, 
And then he says, well, am I being trespassed? I says, look, man, you're not breaking the law. I said, but the ladies don't want you up here. So essentially, if you don't want to leave, I can trespass you and then make you leave the property. And uh, so then I asked him for his identification because it kept going. He started playing the game, started recording the, recording the interaction, trying to draw it out. I told him, go ahead and give me your ID. And I asked for it several times. He wouldn't do it. So I arrested him for obstruction. Mr. Jeff got arrested for standing up for his rights when a cop tried to interfere with them. The only claim against him was making people uncomfortable, which isn't against the law. After almost two years of legal trouble, the obstruction charge was dropped with the help of a free defense lawyer. Now a civil rights lawsuit has been filed against Sergeant Himminger by the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, aiming to declare Mr. Jeff's rights were violated and seeking punitive damages. It's surprising that despite the incident, Sergeant Himminger got promoted to lieutenant. This situation highlights the challenges of protecting your basic rights. Let's join hands to spread the message of justice and fight against corruption within the law enforcement system. Subscribe, like, and share our video on the U.S. Corrupt Cops YouTube channel to help spread the truth and encourage action. Every subscription and share contributes to promoting fairness and accountability in society. Thank you for standing with us.